Welcome back to another edition of the CFS Office Show. I think it's important today to talk about what most of the questions I continue to receive. Those questions are, what stock should I buy? And now I understand that you hear a lot about the stock market, you want to participate in it. At the same time, you want to be able to know more information. Well, on this show, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what should you buy, how you should buy it, and what you should do after you buy it. Stay tuned. Mic check, mic check, no mic check. If you're a business owner, and right now you have no one because you decided to start your own business as being self-employed, this show is going to be definitely for you. I moved to become a VC because I understood that certain decisions will impact the society at large and the economy. See, the economy is affected by you. When I first started in business, I was like everyone else. I thought design determination was enough. Design determination is part of motivation, but it's not what keeps you going. It's about the right set of skills and the right tools. Welcome back, stewards. If you haven't joined CFS Studios show yet, please make sure you subscribe, like, and also make a comment. I can't tell you how important it is to get some feedback from you guys who watch our videos. That allows us to improve on what we do here on YouTube, especially when we're not on the trading floor for our own company. This allows us to be able to not just see what you guys are watching, because we get to get those stats, but we need to know what you're thinking as well. So all those stewards out there who have time, resources, and money that you're responsible for, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow our channel. Now, what stock should you buy? This has been a question that I have asked before. You know, should I go buy Apple? Should I go buy Palantir? Should I go buy Adobe? Should I go buy Lockheed Martin? Does it really matter what stock I buy? And the answer is a three pong tip question. Tip number one. Your age is a factor. Now, I don't mean that because you're young, you can be reckless with money. I don't care if you're 100 years old or if you're nine years old, even though you can't enter the stock market without your parents' assistance. I think it's important because here at CFS, I'm a market maker. My responsibility is to go in and make markets. But one of the things that you need to know is this. You cannot play with money. You work too hard for it. So whether you got 2,000, 100,000, or hundreds of millions of dollars, as some of our clients do, one of the most important things that you have to always digest is that you're not going into the market to lose any money. Your goal is to make it. So if you are under the age of 35, here is my suggestion for you today. If you're under the age of 35, you can actually get involved in some early stage growth companies. That's right. You have time to grow with those companies. If you're over the age and you're right at 59 and a half or older, most of the companies you're going to do can still be growth, but here's the thing, only hold around 20% of your portfolio in growth. How come? Because the most important thing you're thinking about in retirement is a fear of capitulation. Capitulation happens when a company's stock price drops in value. It can drop anywhere from one pip, which is a dollar, all the way down to 10 or 20 or 30. Next thing you know, you're sitting at seeing a 50% reduction in cash from the equity position you hold. And that's the last thing someone that's older that's at retirement is concerned in seeing. But I think that you need to look at it from this way, a tip number one. You need to write down, do I understand what my position is and what is my time horizon? If my time horizon is 36 months, you have no business messing with growth stocks. I have said that to many people. You know, growth stocks don't need 36 months. Growth stock needs decades. That's the reason they call growth stocks. They need time to become blue chips, and that doesn't happen in less than no 36 months. Now, you can always find momentum stocks, but again, if you're over 59 and a half, you're not thinking about momentum. Are you looking at true growth? Are you looking at having a position inside of a company where your cash is increasing, you're receiving dividends, and at the same time, if it's not receiving dividends, can you acquire a stock that has growth that gives you the same potential to double over a seven year period? I use seven because seven is the number of completion. So that is always my average to look at seven years. Can this stock, if I'm holding it, double over seven years? And if the answer is yes, it's probably one of those growth stocks that if you're under the age of 59 and a half, you want to be positioning. You need to be able to look at that. Tip number two, you need to also have a realistic expectation, a realistic expectation on making money. Notice what I said, realistic. All stocks are structured to be positioned for annual basis. All returns, credit card loans, car payments, everything is based on the annual return. 
Anytime you're breaking an annual return, you're really talking about being a momentum trader, which means you're not thinking about annual returns, you're thinking about moment to moment returns. Now I can tell you this, no corporation operates with that thought process. Now remember, these are real companies that people operate and go to work for, get a W-2, and once a year they get a W-2 before January 31st in order for them to get and file their taxes. Now you need to understand that that is not the position you're doing. You're waiting to after February where you don't get a W-2, you get a 1099-B. Well, those rates are based on annually as well. So that is the position that you're taking. You're looking at over the next 12 months, how can I grow my account? Your question should be like, how can I blow it up? As a market maker, I get fired. Let me blow up money inside of an institution account and it's gonna be very unlikely that I get to stay there. Matter of fact, I probably resign before I have to go see the people that I'm blowing their money up with. So you don't wanna do that because you have to see yourself in the mirror and that's not one picture you wanna see. Because you know, once you lose the ability to have confidence, now you're caught in the greed and fear cycle. And you can't trade and you definitely can't buy equities if you're afraid or if you're greedy. These positions are made for retail investors to lose money. So you don't wanna have that concept. You wanna have a business construct system where you're thinking in your mind that I'm actually buying this stock and over the next 12 months, I either plan on increasing my position or increasing my cash. You only got two choices, increase your position or increase your cash, but losing money is not an option. Tip number three, you need to partner with somebody who's experienced. This is one of the most fundamental issues. And I'm not talking about, and I can tell you this, we have membership here at CFS for those individuals who don't have somebody in their family members who handle millions of dollars of trades, who are market makers. That is where you see that little join button on the screen right there. That's right. Look right beside the subscribe button, there's a join button. When you join, you get access to market makers and we have conversations. Does that mean we're trying to make you a market maker? We need you to understand that institutional investors make markets, they do not trade. That is what you need to understand. You do not see a list of retail traders. When you look at the insiders inside of a company, you're gonna notice that if you pull up any stock and you look at the insider list, you're gonna see three things. The insiders as far as founders, institutional investors, and then mutual fund companies that take position inside these. You're not gonna see retail invest investors' names listed on that list. So you and I, if we are retail investors, our names won't be there. But on the other spectrum, a corporation name will be. So you need to function like you a corporation. How come? Because they make markets, they do not day trade. Now I get it, there are several people who day trade. And I need you to understand that market makers beat day traders hand over fist. Day traders have massive losses. And they, they, the idea is this, you cut your losses early. But if you market making, you don't have losses. So what do you have to cut? And that's what makes different when you think about all the different YouTubers out here, they have the program, they're sitting in front of the computer and they're trading every time the market's on. They're given a list of stocks because they need momentum. Market makers don't need momentum. Whether the stock rises or the stock falls, irregardless, they make a market for their company. They make a market for you to be able to get out of trades. And guess what? You pay more than they do. Because if you are day trading, you are taking positions, which means your capital is at risk. But if you're market making, your cash increase without risk. Now those are my three tips for today. Tip number one, make sure you understand that age is important. Tip number two, you need to make sure you have a realistic expectation when you go into trading. Tip number three, you can either subscribe or join our membership. And if you don't, you need to make sure that you're around somebody who has experience operating a public traded C corporation. That is a strong tip. They need to have experience operating a public traded company. You guys need to understand that a lot of stocks are not correlated with the price of the actual shares. So shares, for example, many analysts, even I today, struggle with the evaluation of Tesla because it is dis correlated to the way that the stock is trading. Well, I, I use another term for you because sometimes you need more context. The stock price does not reflect the activity of the company. I don't care how excited you get. Anytime you go above 100 times earnings, I'll tell you what, I'll create a company, I'll get it listed, and you pay me 100 years from now. That's what it is. 100 times earning is 100 years in order for you to make $1. 
when you start buying stocks that it takes 50 years so if that pe ratio is 50 that's for every 50 dollars you invest you get one dollar back that's uh, it's gonna take 50 years to get that money back is that what you want to do but it also allows you to be in a situation where capitulation is not your it's your enemy see the whole goal of investing is to increase your cash position it's not to lose money regardless of how old you are i don't care if a financial advisor or any other market maker or analyst at this say that doesn't work with cfs makes a statement that you're young, you can afford to lose money. Let me be honest with you. You don't have to go to the stock market to lose money. Go to your local casino or your local gas station and hit a scratch off. And if you want speculation, that's the best speculation you're gonna get. At least you don't have to wait till the market close. You only gotta stand there for like two minutes and you know your answer versus sitting in the chair for eight hours and getting the same results. Now, what stock should you buy? It's based on your age. Think about that. If you're under the age of 35, you need to be in growth stocks, not bonds. Don't even waste your time. You don't need to be in any type of municipal bonds, CDs, or money markets. Those investments are for the ones who don't know how to handle money because that's not a business construct. A C corporation today will sell a bond. They will sell a bond. There's a time where bonds play a role in your portfolio. But that's not today.